I have to be honest, the EDC Q&A is fast becoming my favorite segment of what I do on YouTube. It's easy because there's no mic, you can hear my world, I can, well I can't hear your world unfortunately. It's easy to edit and it's nice to have this back and forth communication between myself and the people who watch my YouTube show. Don't get me wrong, gear reviews are cool, I love reviewing gears, I love getting my hand on new gear, but having the two-way communication, really awesome. So this week is part two of last week's part one, check it out year or year if you missed it, Q&A. So I'm going to answer the second half of the questions those people I didn't get to last week will be answered today. Let's do it. Okay, question one from Arno Kutsia. Where would you recommend for firearm training for someone looking to improve their skills? Arno, depending on where you are, I would say speak to your namesake, Arno Barlow. Uh, he does a really cool course. What is, what is club called? Combative Concepts. Check them out on Facebook. Really hard, really real aggressive training, which is the right kind of training. Um, and then also Bravo Tactical Africa, they, if you can't get to them, they publish uh, YouTube videos which are really useful for, for improving your skills. And then also, obviously, James Smart, bug him on Facebook continuously until you get answers from him. A wealth of knowledge, an expert teacher of human beings. Julian Noble, where is the best place to find second-hand gear, packs, EDC tools, etc.? So with lockdown, going to stores and that sort of thing, I don't think it's going to be a possibility anymore. There's a Facebook page called EDC and Tactical Gear for Sale. I'll link it down below. Check that place out that people are often selling things on there, um, new and secondhand. So that would be my main resource for buying secondhand gear. Paul Smith, Q1. An EDC for the EDG sticker would be great. Would like one for my van, please. I would like one for my Jeep as well. It is in the works. A few people have asked me for it. A few people have even asked me to put it on holsters like I did with a Southwest Alt. Like I did with my Like I did with my Southwest holster. People have asked me for that. It is in the works. It is gonna happen. Just give me some time. I want to make sure it's really cool. Okay, Glen St. Joseph. So when can we meet for coffee? You know what? I wouldn't mind some mug and bean. I've missed going to Mug and Bean. I used to go to Mug and Bean like every single weekend. What I am thinking and what do you guys think of when Sugar Kai Range is open, organizing a range day for all of the EDC, for the EDG, supporters, um, viewers, that sort of thing, where I'll book out the range and we can come and shoot and maybe have a, a braai, or if you're watching this in the US or not South Africa, a barbecue, that kind of deal. Let me know. I can make it happen, but I don't want to waste anybody's time and then like three people show up. What do you think? Okay, Paul Smith, Q2. Michelle Lisa Jan seems to be very involved in this, your hobby, baby, EDC for the EDG. My wife assists me with other things and recently asked when she would get paid. So my question is, when and what do you pay Michelle for her assistance? So I think I said this in the last video, I, I don't pay Michelle for assistance, I bless her with the opportunity to, to assist me, right? That's my story and I'm sticking to it and if your wife does assist you with things, now the racing car going past my house, if your wife doesn't, does assist you with things, then you should remind her that it is a blessing for her to have the opportunity to assist you with things. On a serious note though, running a YouTube channel is a lot of work and if you are thinking of doing it, that's something I highly recommend you do. It's very uh, enjoyable, it allows you to meet more people. But remember, I work a normal 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. And Saturday I film and half of Sunday I would edit or upload. So, for almost the past year and a half, I've technically worked a six and a half day week, right? Um, it's not filming and uploading and editing YouTube videos, it's not an hour and a half deal. Generally on Saturdays I get to bed... Well, I'd say Sundays, I get to bed last Sunday when I did the Manka video, I got to bed at 4.45 a.m. So, Michelle does take a lot of strain. It does take a very specific kind of relationship where both of you are invested in each other's personal growth. Talking about that, have a look at this. Michelle's doing these paintings to celebrate women. This is a mistake to me. It's something you have when... You have to unfortunately as a woman have one of your breasts removed often to um, 
avert cancer or to get rid of cancer, that sort of thing. I think these are really cool, you know, because too often we only publish things about the beautiful side of women or people and the non-beautiful side or the side we perceive as non-beautiful, more importantly, because beauty isn't just what's on the outside, it's forgotten. So very cool of her to be doing this. But with me being a YouTuber, uh, Michelle has to be very understanding. And she's really awesome about it. And I can guarantee you without her, we probably wouldn't have this show. Now, that doesn't mean you should send her things and not me. I want all the stuff. Okay, it's very important to understand that. Then it's either Jocko, Jacko or Yaku could see her. So I have more than one open in mind. What holster do you like from Southwest? Rattler or Viper? Why? Man, what a question to ask. I, I like... Rattlers, because it gives me the opportunity to carry uh, a spare mag, which I think is very important. But the Vipers are really comfortable. They, they're going to be more concealable for most people. And I'm getting a new Viper tomorrow that I can't talk about, but I'll show you guys. So ask me the question tomorrow and I'll give you another answer maybe. But for me, currently the Rattlers are the go-to because, not because of this section, right? This section is equally good on the Rattler or the Viper. It's because of this section. I like the spare mag option. Okay, question two from uh, Yaka Kutsia. In your EDC, would you still take a normal flashlight if you have a weapon mounted light and your phone and try to keep a minimal EDC? Not planning to be outside in the dark that often and if outside, it's outside of town where no one should be. So the answer to that question, if you watched my video on Sunday, is an absolute yes. I don't regard the light on my phone as a flashlight. That is a flash for when I take nighttime pictures. That's the first part. The second part is this guy allows me to do so much more than point at bad guys. Remember, I can't point my weapon mounted light. I can't point my weapon mounted light at the bad guy or at a non-bad guy sorry i can point this at the non-bad guy and say oopsie daisy my mistake light is might the ability to gather data and make informed decisions is probably one of the most important facets of shall i say combat that's why intelligence is the most important as one of the most important aspects of combat um, from a military aspect, avoidance and awareness from a civilian aspect all boils down to your ability to see one and form informed decisions. Having a flashlight aids with that. Also, there was a survey done and bad guys were spoken to and they asked what do they think when they see someone walking with a flashlight in their hand and they said they think law enforcement. So just by that could save you from even having to use this. So this is mandatory. This is highly recommended. For me, this is mandatory. Okay, also, Yako could say, where can, where can I get that sticker I'm looking for, EDC for the EDG? Thanks for the amazing channel. Hope for the best of Father's Day giveaway. That's happening this weekend. Might be before, might be a late, little bit later. I don't think later than this weekend, but I'm not going to say when to sleep in fear. So thank you for the compliment on the channel. Stickers are going to come soon, I promise you. And I'm probably going to chuck it in, like, if you buy a holster off my website, then you get a free sticker that can deal like there's no point in charging people for a sticker because the cost of a courier will be more so it might even just be a free thing but it's going to come soon roy riberio what do you think is the most overlooked part of an edc setup and why i would say the non-aggressive things um things like flashlights things like tourniquets things like mindset right a lot of people think that, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking this from Pat McNamara, a lot of people think that because they have a firearm, they are armed. That's not the case. The, the, the person is the weapon, the firearm is the tool. So things people overlook most of all when it comes to everyday carry. And everyday carry isn't only about gear, it's, and I'm trying to drive this to people. It's more about, it's also about mindset, right? The EDC, the first responder mindset, you've got to train and train often and just because you can't get to a training course doesn't mean you can't train i run 50 to 100 draw strokes every single oh, i'm not gonna say every single night i'd say five times a week the most overlooked parts of edc are the non-stabbing non-shooty things your flashlights your tourniquets and then your your training mindset in my opinion okay Shah rose khan 
Which Alster is your favorite everyday go-to Alster? I think the best solution here is to show you the ones I alternate between. Okay, so PL Pro Alsters, it's either going to be the Southwest Alsters Viper for PL Pro, or it's going to be the Edge Custom Carry Eclipse Alster, which I, and I'm going to say this every single time because I think it's a great Alster, I consulted on, or obviously the Rattler you saw earlier on. Now, if we're going just base firearm, then I'm quite keen on the Tenicore Valo, really good concealment holster, as the uh, wedge. This is the Valo 3, I think it is. The 4 has a body contour wedge, which is a better one, but also the really cool discrete carry concept clips are game changer. And then also, obviously, staple of concealed carry, Bravo Concealment, make really, really good holsters. You shall not go wrong with Bravo Concealment. And I believe their 4.0s are coming out as well, so stay tuned for that. And then there's also the Southwest Alsters Viper. So if I ran non-weapon mounted light, man, I could switch between those Alsters like every three days, just rotate. And I'd be happy with all three of them. So you're not going to go wrong with all three of them. If you want to buy either of them, check your budget and check the availability of it. And if you get any of them, you will be happy. And then when I go firearm without weapon mounted light, but spare mag it will be my southwest holsters viper which caters for such my general go-to to answer your question is southwest holsters i like not only the holsters they make i like the mentality they like the artistic uh, nature of making the holsters james at southwest i speak to him almost daily he is a tattoo artist i have tattoos which I think is really cool and he really brings that artistic flair to his holsters. I also happen to know what his plans are going forward and he's going to be the deal of deals when it comes to holster making. So stay tuned for that. But you know, there are so many good holster manufacturers in the country that if you go for any of those options, you're not going to be like, ah, oh, I'm so sad. Also guys, I just want to say something. If you ask me a question about holsters on any form of social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You can find me on all of them as EDC for the EDG. You don't have to apologize for asking me. It's kind of what I'm here for. So you don't have to start off by saying, I and I'm sorry to be asking you this. I'm a resource for that. So please feel free to ask because it makes me feel so uncomfortable when people older than me are apologizing for talking to me. You know, it's like I was raised in a very respectful um, household and like, you don't ever have to apologize for asking me a question. Michelle Lisa Janison, I have a question. Don't you think I should get paid for being your admin lady? Do you guys think Michelle should get paid? So two questions. You, I'm going to reach out to you guys. Answer me on Facebook or Instagram or, or YouTube or whatever. Do you think Michelle should get some kind of remuneration for assisting me? And how often do you think we should do these Q&As? Every week, every second week, James Smart is still a part of it. So I was thinking like once a month, first week of the month, James Smart, like hardcore self-defense EDC Q&A questions. And then like maybe the, the second week of the month, EDC life questions for me. And I'm also going to get um, JC from Bravo Tactical Africa to be on here as well. Okay, then Gert van Dalen. EDC advice you wish you knew when you started. EDC advice I wish I knew when I started. Expect it to be less comfortable. First thing you buy is not going to be the last thing you buy. Take opinions and advice and also formulate your own. Educate yourself. If you're doing it right, it probably isn't cheap. And EDC is a lifestyle more than a gear set. The everyday carry lifestyle is what EDC is all about. And the gear set supplements that lifestyle. Okay, then from Mike O'Brien, when deciding on ammo for EDC not training, what do you look for in a bullet? I know you should go for hollow point, but are there any other aspects? Winchester Ranger, 127 grain plus P. That's what I use. It's what I've always used. I've never had a problem with it. So that's what I look for. Okay, so I think this is the last question. Clive Bitteridge, hi, what will your next fire on be and why? Assume Michelle doesn't already have a firearm, which firearm would be a first? Okay, so my next firearm will be some kind of AR platform because I've always wanted one. I won't buy another pistol uh, platform because I've got one and I don't need two. Unless someone happens to offer me an FN57, that's just an FN57 or a 1911. Babe, yeah. did you buy a 48 or a 43? She bought the 43X, so she's probably going to get it within the next few months. She's waiting for her license to come through. We went through, I think she went through um, 
a process of nearly a year and a half of shooting firearms, to, taking the time to find exactly which one she wanted, and the 43X is her, is the one she just fell in love with. Not only, not only from a comfort standpoint, but also from a ability to shoot it standpoint, ability to conceal the firearm standpoint, a price standpoint, a brand standpoint. So there's a lot of things she looked at. You know, her first, her very first, before she knew anything about firearms, her very first go-to was the Taurus PT-111, something like that. Um, and then she educated herself a bit more, and she learned a bit more, and she learned about parts and parts availability and those sort of things. She was going for the 43X, the one with a rail, so she can put a weapon-mounted light on it. So that's going to be her first firearm. And my next firearm will be some kind of AR platform, I'm just not sure which direction I'm going to go. Southwest Ulster's competition giveaway is going to be within the next couple of days, but I'm not going to tell you when, probably on Sunday, who we're kidding. I'll probably put it out on Sunday. Good luck to all 7 million of you who entered. I've spent like the last two nights getting Michelle to uh, write down all those names and type it out. So what a strain it's been on me. Keep an eye on my Instagram tomorrow. I'm going to post a video of a, probably tomorrow or Friday, of a new Ulster that I'm getting South South Ulster's and I'm the only person in the country to have it. So that'll be cool. And then I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, let me know. If you didn't do anything I can improve on. Let me know if I missed any questions, I apologize. Let me know and I'll add it to the next session or I'll answer you one on one. That is it guys. Enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend. If you are in Cape Town, cold front coming. Oh yeah, I'm a cold weather guy. But stay safe, be safe. I'll see you guys soon for another review. Cheers, God bless.